Hello, and thank you for joining us today as we review the version 11 care plan training. On the agenda today, we will be covering the what, why, and who of care planning, talk a little about risk stratification, take a step-by-step -step look at the new module, discuss a few of the current and future features, identify a few strategies to help the care management process, and talk about an important step you can take following this training. So what is a care plan? A care plan is a document created and maintained by the care team, whether that be the provider, nurse, or care manager, that provides detailed instructions for the care of a patient and is constructed using the patient's individual health needs. The greatest benefit to care planning is at the heart of everything we do, and that is to improve patient outcomes and provide patient-centered care. This module can also help your organization meet specific standards for things like grants, managed care contracts, or quality programs in a more efficient way. Though care plans are useful for any patient, they are particularly beneficial for those with chronic conditions, patients receiving care from multiple specialists, those impacted by psychosocial concerns, or those with complex treatment plans. Let's take a look at a technique that will help you to identify patients with, that would benefit most from care management. Risk stratification is a term that you've probably heard used more than a few times. It's a technique used to identify patients with a greater need for care. A few examples of what could cause a patient to fall into a high-risk category are things like frequent admissions, complex medical conditions like cancer or others which require frequent specialist visits, comorbidities, or those taking a large number of medications. There are many tools available to help you make the best decisions. The health risk assessment form is one of those options and works by allowing the care team to understand the patient's complete health status it engages the patient in the conversation, and it fosters the bond between the patient and the care team. Now let's take a look at the module itself. Some of you may already be working in the current care plan section located in the patient's problem list. And if you are, don't worry. Once the upgrade happens, all of your clinical information, all of your documentation will come over into the new module. So here's an example of what that new module will look like. Instead of being in that problem section, it's now going to be its own tab. So just like you have the notes, the orders and charges, you'll now have a care plan tab. So that information, the clinical information will cross over. So where you used to have the goals of care, those will turn into goals. Any of your problems will turn into a health concern. The patient instructions will turn into interventions. And because evaluation and outcomes is a brand new section, there will be no clinical information that crosses over, but you will see the statement that lets you know that this goal was converted from patient problem data. One last thing that I do want to mention is sometimes in those patient instructions, you have multiple things listed in there. Those will come over as one large intervention. So once that transfers over, if you'd like to break them down into individual interventions, you can do that. Like we saw in the previous slide, the care plan module is composed of four sections. The goal or the expected outcome of the patient care, like improving or controlling blood pressure. The health concern or the specific health issue of the patient, like hypertension the interventions or actions taken to address the health concern and achieve the main goal, like exercising regularly or practicing stress management techniques, and the evaluation and outcome section where you document the results of those interventions. The first step to creating a new care plan is to set a goal by selecting the Add New Goal button. Identify if this goal was initiated by the provider, the patient, or both. Enter your goal using a few different options. You have free text, create from finding, or quick text. Once you've made your selection, press save. When creating goals, remember to involve the patient in the process by finding out what is most important to them. Goals can come in many different shapes and sizes. 
They can be clinical and often long-term, like lowering of an A1C. They can be patient-centered and often short-term, like drinking one less soda a day. A patient-centered goal can be seen as interventions to help achieve the main goal, but may also stand on their own. A goal could also be behavioral, compliance-oriented, or follow-up related. The health concern is used to identify which of the patient's conditions or concerns are at the core of this specific goal. Start by clicking the plus sign below the section. Identify the health concern using several different areas. The first is by checking the box next to a health concern that has already been used for this patient, by pulling it from the patient's problem list or vitals, you also have free text or quick text. Once you've made your selection, press Save. To promote best outcomes, interventions should always engage the patient and family, aid in meeting the goal, and be obtainable to the patient. Document an intervention by clicking the plus sign under the section. Choose from free text, a medicine finding, or quick text. This section also has a fourth option, and that is to link it to an active medication. If the patient has an active medication and you'd like to use that as one of their interventions, simply click the drop-down menu and check the box next to the appropriate medication. When saving your interventions, you have two different options. If you're doing multiple interventions at one time, you can save and add another, and this just kind of takes one step away from having to reopen a new box. If you press this, the box, a fresh box will pop up and you can keep adding interventions, a little time saver. But if you're only adding one intervention today, you have the just save box. The evaluations and outcomes is the newest section and that is used to add any notes relevant to the goal or the progress of the patient. Add to this section by selecting the plus sign, and here you have free text or quick text. When you're done, press Save. So in the previous slides, we've mentioned creating from a medicine finding, so I want to show you what that looks like. You'll start by selecting the Create from Finding hyperlink. Then you'll enter in that description or medicine into the search bar. Identify what you're looking for and press select. Once you do that, you'll notice that on the lower left-hand corner, you see that map to finding ID indicated right there. And that's how you'll know that it's been linked. When you're done, press save. You're able to modify the status at the goal and intervention level. So to complete only an intervention, you're going to select the one you're looking for by right-clicking, set status to, and then you have several options. You have completed, in progress, not started, stopped, or void. To complete a goal or modify the status of a goal and everything in it, you'll find the goal, right-click, set your status to, then you have completed, in progress, or void. So now we're going to start to break down the module and some of the features that are in it. I'm calling this the toolbar. So when you're in your care plan on that main page, you're going to see a little toolbar on the right-hand side. Your first option is to print that care plan for your patient when you're in, in the office with them and you'd like them to go home with something, then selecting the print button from the main screen. You also have the ability to expand or collapse the goals. This is good when you have multiple goals that you're working on with your patient or you're working on a laptop and your space is very limited. So collapsing all of them down so that you can target exactly which one you're looking for at that time. Then your view uh, will always default to active goals during the upgrade. But you do have the ability to change what you're able to see on your main care plan page. So to modify your view, you're going to select the drop-down menu. Then you can also include your completed goals or any voided goals. The next thing you're able to do is hide from the patient. So you're able to do this at the goal and or intervention levels. 
And there's two different ways that you can do this. The first is from that main care plan page by either right clicking on the goal or right clicking on the individual intervention and selecting hide from patient. The second option you have is when you're creating the goal or intervention or modifying or editing that goal itself, you'll see that this hide from patient button by selecting that is the same thing. So two different options depending on uh, what stage you're at in the process. You're also able to send the care plans electronically exactly the same way as you're currently sending things now. Once you're in that patient's chart, you're gonna hit that exchange tab, generate. Make sure that you modify your to, what, and include sections. So are you sending this to the patient or an external provider? Make sure your what is set to care plan. Make sure that you have all the sections included that you'd like, and then press send. I do wanna make one note that when you select the hide from patient option at the goal or intervention levels, those will hide if you're sending it electronically to a patient, but they will not hide when you're sending them to an external provider. So the language is very accurate that Greenway put in, and so you're only going to have the ability to hide from the patient and not another medical provider. You're also able to cite the care plan into an encounter note. To do that, once you're at the encounter note level, you're going to hit the cite button on your left-hand side, check the main care plan box, and decide which you're looking for. Would you like to cite in all care plans, only for those current assessments, or any goals that have been updated today? Once you've made your selection, press OK. And remember that if you want to make that setting permanent so that every time you cite or open up an encounter note that it defaults to the same setting, you're going to want to hit that Save as Defaults button before pressing OK. You're also able to modify the health concerns at the care plan module. To do that, you're going to first start by selecting the Show sidebar on. Then you'll come down and hover over the health concerns and that will illuminate the changing icon. Once you select that, you'll open up your maintain health concerns box. Find the health concern that you'd like to modify by right clicking it and selecting as inactive. If the health concern itself is already inactive, then you will have the ability to be active once again. And just like the main screen where you're able to modify what you see, you're also able to do that at the health concern level as well. So if we want to see any active or inactive, then we can come here and select the drop-down menu. And instead of just seeing active, we can select all. And that will give us any of those inactive or voided. You're able to show the history of the goal or the interventions that, are, that you've been doing with this patient to achieve the goal. So to show the history, you're going to go to the goal level and right click and select show history. And here's an example of how it looks once you do that. So for instance, I created this intervention on 919. On 928, I hid it from the patient. And then on the same day, I removed it. And here's another intervention that I created on 919. And I completed it, and I can see that it's been completed by this green check mark. I completed it on 928. If I voided the intervention, instead of a green check mark, a red X would appear. So here's an example of the completed care plan that we have been working on for this patient. As we can see, we're able to see all of our user and date stamps next to our evaluations and outcomes and our interventions. I made my first outreach to this patient and added my note. So I will keep this goal active and in progress. Um, and I will follow up again with this patient in one month. And once I do that, I will add an additional evaluation and outcomes note documenting the patient's progress.
Before we leave the care plan, let's cover some of the features and changes that are coming. With this module, you're able to customize the information to each patient, see the date and user stamps attached to each intervention and evaluation and outcome note, print or send the care plan electronically, cite goals that are in progress into an encounter note, and link items to a medicine. One thing that we didn't mention previously is that unlike before in, in the current module that's attached to the problem list, you had to open up an encounter note in order to document and make any adjustments in that care plan section. Now that it's its own standalone module, you no longer have to open up encounter notes in order to document, which I think is really going to save a lot of time and you guys are really going to like that feature, so that's exciting. We also know that Greenway is working on a few items. The one that I think you will be most interested in, because I know that we are, is the ability to report off of this new care plan module. Right now, it's, we don't have the reporting functionality, but we do know that Greenway is working on it actively, and so we don't know much more than that, but we do know that it's coming, and as we get that information, we will make sure that we pass it out to everyone as well. And also, right now, when you're citing in your goals into an encounter note, you only have the ability to cite active goals, in-progress goals, so they are making the, the changes to allow you to also be able to cite in any completed goals, so that is coming as well. Now that we've taken a deeper look at the new module, let's review a few population health strategies that can help your organization. Pre-visit planning, an example of this would be to identify care gaps, open referrals, or new results prior to the patient's visit, therefore ensuring all needed items are addressed at the time of care. Performing morning huddles, which is often sharing those pre-visit planning findings with the provider or other relevant clinical staff member the morning of the patient's appointment. For example, if the MA already knows the patient is due for a PAP today, they can have the patient prepped and ready for the provider when they walk in the room. Practicing the warm handoff technique between the PCP and the care manager. Using energy to document risk level or programs. Having regular meetings be between the providers and the care managers to discuss patient progress or difficult cases. And the last is to determine appropriate outreach intervals based on risk level. For example, a managed care contract may require that all high-risk patients be contacted at least once a month, and medium-risk patients be contacted every two to three months. So here's something that we added in after creating this whole training program um, for the new version 11 care plan module we sat back and realized how closely everything is related, so we just wanted to put this on the screen. I know um, some of you watching this video right now may be very active in that patient-centered medical home standards and achievement for your organization. So this is just one slide that shows you while we today are talking about care planning and providing quality patient care and promoting team dynamics, all of those things are so closely related to um, other things that we might not be thinking of at the time, and this is one of those examples of how patient-centered medical home is so closely connected to everything that we do and everything that the system has to offer. The last thing we're going to talk about today is how to take the next step. Department leaders. Now that you have this new information, bring your key leadership together to discuss how your organization will use the care plan module. Here's a couple of questions to help get you guys started. Who will document in the care plan section? Will it be providers, care managers, both? If multiple levels of staff will be working in the module together, how will that look? If only one staff type will be documenting in the care plan, will any additional communication be needed? And remember, when you're having these conversations, the goal is always to find the best option that fits your organization, fosters a team approach to care, and improves the health outcomes of our patients. And that concludes the version 11 care plan training. Thank you so much for attending. 
and i hope you have a wonderful day.